Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. I'd like to make a few announcements for the benefit of new people. And so I hope that old subscribers, people who have been here for at least six months or more, that you will be patient when occasionally you see announcements in the beginning of the videos. This is for the benefit of people who may have just been referred this video by a family or friends, or maybe by the sovereign grace of God, this video has just pop up, popped up on your recommended, or you've been praying and God has sovereignly led you here. You are welcome here. This is an end times prophecy channel, which means that the prophetic words that the Lord has given me are directed towards a specific part of Bible truth and Bible revelation, and that is the end times. The time when by the decision of God, God's sovereign decision. So this is not a decision that actually is asking for human opinion or asking for human beings to let God know, but we're not ready and why is this happening now? The end times were already prophesied thousands of years ago and now we are entering into that time at a rather rapid pace when all, all of the unfulfilled prophecies of the Bible will come to pass. And so that is the kind of prophecy that the Lord has given me. And that is the kind of information that I share here. There is a blog that is called the master's voice end times prophecy blog. And you can find it by checking the URL below. Look underneath the video. You're going to see the channel name and next to it, you're going to see a little drop down menu, like a V. If you click that, it will drop down everything about the channel and you will find out where the blog is. I always strongly recommend that people understand these videos are a support to the written prophecies. If you want to gain a heart of understanding, if you want to understand these prophecies and read them along with biblical scriptures, some of which are provided in the blog post, but some of which you are supposed to be learning on your own in personal Bible study, then it, I can't recommend enough that you get used to going back to the blog. The Bible says that when apostle Paul came and he was teaching the Bereans after he would leave them, after teaching them certain things, they would diligently search the scriptures to see if the things that Paul said were so. And so as you're hearing end time prophecy, and for those of you who are committed and regular blog users, you're going back to the blog. It's imperative. This is the heart of God that you understand where these prophetic messages fit. These messages, I look at them as the Lord coloring in between the lines. So in the scripture, you will find that it will maybe say just one sentence. For instance, um, just a moment, please. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9, it says, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now, this is only two lines of an entire chapter. And yet, if you go to the master's voice, you can find at least 20 to 30 prophecies that color in for you in detail what some of these lying signs, lying powers, and lying wonders that the devil will come with. And there are many more posts that explain to the discerning believer how to avoid becoming part of that unrighteous group of people who will perish by these deceptions. I was curating the blog the other day and I noticed that there are over 20 prophecies of the harm that causes harm, the harm that people have all over the world put into their bodies. Now this is an example of a lying deception. How so? Because people were led astray by certain, certain assertions that were made and certain claims that there that were made many people chose to put their trust in that and follow after that to the exclusion of extreme constant and very loud warnings that were coming from the Lord Jesus Christ with the result that now we are seeing what God was talking about in 2021 all the fallout that he said would follow taking those things. And so now we are looking at 
people in a very literal sense perishing because they loved not the truth and therefore they perish and they come to harm by the lie. And so it is very important for us to be discerning people, people who can hear, people who don't have a hard heart, but also people who then know how to follow up with the information that we're getting. How do we use this information in a way that actually benefits us? How do we take the prophetic word and make it useful to ourselves? And the blog can help you, but nothing helps more than Bible study. If you are not a committed person, if you are not a committed student of reading your Bible, I cannot insist enough that you get a Bible. A phone on your device is not a Bible. It is time to get yourself a paper and ink Bible because with the prices of the Bibles now, they will soon be out of the reach of the ordinary person. And then you will find yourself stuck in a very difficult place because the Bibles that you have on the phone, yes, people claim they're accessible and everything, but you need to have this word in front of you studying it. So at, at basis, I will say this, study it in the format that works for you, but always make sure that you have one so that when community access so-and-so disappears, you can have access to it. So this channel is a video library um, for the future. I'm laying down these prophecies for the future. So some of these prophecies are seven years old. Some of them are six years old. So if you're the kind of person coming here and going, oh, oh what has been fulfilled, then I can automatically tell that you are somebody who does not have a grasp of what prophecy is, first of all. But second of all, you're somebody who's a little bit tone deaf because when the prophecies on this channel come to pass, the world will be in its worst period ever. So I'm not prophesying here about, oh, God is going to get your enemies and, oh, God is making all things right. No, I'm talking about things like the sea being drawn back and beasts from the sea coming out. I'm talking about beasts from the air, beasts from under the water, and beasts from the high, the very high portions of the earth coming down to mix with mankind. So if anyone is in a rush to see that type of thing, I can assure you that the greater majority of us are not. We are content to wait upon the Lord for his timing and to continue to test and prove all things until we see them at last coming to play. So the blog also has a community page. The community page can be found like this. I think there's two ways. You can look down under the video until you see the channel name, click the channel name, and then it will take you to what looks like a dashboard. And then it will say home, video, playlists, and then community. On the community page, that's where I share different insights that the Lord is giving me, just things that God tells me in my personal time when he's giving me deeper insights into these prophecies or spiritual teachings that the Lord lays upon my heart as I'm doing my personal Bible study. And then I am moved to write these things out into teachings. I used to post them on Facebook, but I'm very busy and sometimes some things have to fall away. So now I post them on the community page. The second way to find the community page is simply go to the YouTube search bar and click right in the master's voice prophecy blog. It'll take you to the same dashboard and you can find the community. It is the fourth tab. But in order to see community, you have to be a subscriber. Community is given by YouTube only for those who are actually subscribe to the channel. So if you're minded to subscribe to the channel, then you'll be able to see the community page. So today let's go into it. I am moving into what I call transhumanist prophecies. This is what the Lord calls it. Transhumanism. We will find that transhumanism is going to be one of the greatest movements that has ever afflicted. And yes, I do mean that word afflicted mankind. Transhumanism is going to be put forward to the human community as the best thing that we have ever had. It will be sold under certain mantras such as I call it no more weeping, no more pain, no more sickness, no more death, because those are going to be the very top talking points and the high marketing points of transhumanism. We will be told that it is such a pity at first it is such a pity that we have to get sick, that we have to get old. The thing with the people who bring out transhumanism, transhumanism, which is basically the blending of humanity with something else. Trans basically will mean that we will transcend or rise above base humanity, mere humanity. 
being a flesh and blood man, woman, or child. And we will rise to something higher that has now put off the old man. Listen to the language I'm using. These are all promises from the Bible. God is the one who tells us to put off the old man. But what old man is he talking about? Is God saying that we should get rid of our body and go and live in a new body? No, the Lord is telling us to put off the old man who likes to smoke and drink and fornicate and lie and be selfish and prone to anger and move into the higher pursuit of the sanctified born again person that we can only receive in the person of Jesus Christ. So when the Lord says, put off the old man and enter into something new, he is basically saying, come away from that sin bound life where you are shackled like a slave to sin and move into the new life with me. But when transhumanism comes, they're literally going to offer new bodies. They're going to offer a completely new existence. They're going to offer a completely new self. And Satan will tell you that this new existence is going to be a blessed, happy, worry-free, age-free, disease-free, oldness-free, death-free existence. But as I shared in this post, because of the things that the Lord spoke to me today, April 17, 2022, Satan is a cursed being. So when someone is a cursed being, it means that he is directly under an oppression set upon him by a higher authority. No one who is cursed can ever offer you something pure. So a cursed person can never invite you into a pure relationship because that person, by reason of the curse, is carrying a stigma that will affect everything that he touches. So Satan is absolutely incapable of offering human beings anything good, anything true, anything anything loyal, anything pure, anything that is devoid of a catch, anything that Satan offers this world carries a huge destructive catch. But if people are deceived, as I just read in 2 Thessalonians 9 and 10, 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 9 and 10. If someone is deceived, if someone does not have the love of the truth in them, meaning that when truth comes, they reject it because they're thinking, well, what about this? And what about that? And I don't like the way that sounds. So they put off truth. The Bible says that God will then give those people over to their desires. He will send them a strong delusion and they will basically be destroyed by it. And so the Lord took me quite by surprise today. Not that the topic is surprising. I dream about these things constantly. I've spoken of chimeras. That's, that's already a video on the master's blog on the Master's Voice channel. It's not yet uh, put up on the blog, but it will be soon. But I've spoken of chimeras, and again, God addressed that here. So the title for today's message is The Human-Alien Hybrid Question. I was making myself a little lunch, and this is what I began to hear. The Human-Alien Hybrid Question over and over again. And I knew that the Lord wanted to speak to me. So I put that down and I came and sat and here are the things that the Lord shared with me. The end of this world is going to be a freak show. If you've been watching the master's voice for any length of time, that means you already know that I'm in the supernatural series. And if you've even heard a few of the things that I've described, humanity becoming corrupted and becoming undead, living creatures of great strength that will tear other people, humanity becoming um, extremely distressed by the coming of different types of creatures, creatures that are land bound like wolf man and dog man and other things, creatures that are water bound such as the mermaids and queens of the sea that I recently covered, and also creatures that will come down from the sky and from other dimensions as I covered extensively in the Alien series. Aliens are not from any far planet far away. They are from a counter dimension. I said, if I am here and you can see the wall be next to me and my neighbor is next door, that neighbor next door shows where aliens come from. They are in the same world as me, same building, but just in a dimension on unseen next door. I covered extensively the coming of fallen angels and giants. So I'm not going to go into those things in detail. I hope that we will become people who are also willing to make the investment of time and do the work 
all these videos are here. I've even put them into handy playlists for you. For, so all you basically need to do is click a playlist and start listening to the video from the first one. If you listen for the, from the first one and go through them, you will get an extremely comprehensive and holistic knowledge of every single topic that God has given me to share on this blog so far. So a freak show is basically where there's no law and order. And there's also a lot of elements that are completely outside of what people are used to. So do not expect in the end times to see only people. And when I say only people, I'm speaking in the sense of only people like shapes. So there will be unclean things among us who carry human like shapes. And if they do not divulge what they are, we will not know. Or if God does not expose them through the operation of the Holy Spirit telling you celestial, this is not a person we will never know, but there will also be creatures that will boldly wear their other skin. So they're not going to pretend to be anything that they are not. If they have 15 arms, they are going to walk around in the society with their 15 arms, 22 eyes, and many dreams I have are so much like this that sometimes as soon as I land in the dream, I'm just like, oh Lord, we are in this place again. It will be a freak show and the unimaginable will be walking around freely with the imaginable, meaning that the things you see on TV will be a part of normal society. And the Bible talks about this in Matthew 13 and verse 30. It's actually Matthew 13 from verse 24 to 30, where it says that a man had a field and that man went to sleep and he had sowed good seed in his field. And then an enemy came by night and sowed tares. And after a while, when the fruit of the land began to grow up, the servants came running to the man and said, Master, someone has sowed tares in the field. You sowed good seed, but now tares are growing in this field. Tares just basically means weed, right? But it's a specific type of weed. And the master said immediately, an enemy has done this. So the master knew that this was a deliberate act of sabotage to prejudice and destroy his wheat harvest by sowing something. Tares are a weed, but they are a very specific type of weed. And they look at first glance, almost exactly like wheat. Please pay attention to this. What the enemy sold was not dandelions or roses, whereby when the wheat starts coming up and the roses come up, and then you say, oh, I can easily tell the difference. No, the master sold blue and the enemy sold blue. And it was very hard to tell. But the servants of the master were trained, and so they were able to see this is not what our master originally sold. And then what does the master say? The servant said, should we rip them up quickly? And the master said, no, because you will destroy the wheat harvest. Let them grow up together until harvest time. Then bring my wheat into the barn and burn the tares. So this is the end times and we need to have a very good understanding of what God is saying. God is saying that throughout human history, he has not been asleep. There are times when people respond to this information as if God is so clueless, as if he's been looking reading a magazine or sleeping and all sorts of things have been happening on this earth. And they're like, but why did God, but why did God? Because God is very patient and God is not working on the human clock. I've said it and it's not harshness, but many of the people who mock and question God and say, oh, if God was this, those people will not even be here for the fulfillment of the things that I'm speaking of. They will not even last to the manifestation of these demonic things. Because as the Bible says many times, man will be taken away. Even if you read the apocryphal books, there will be such a great harvest of this earth. And I am not talking rapture harvest. I'm talking about the leaving of the earthly soul to go and face its final determination before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So it is necessary that if, because we don't know if we are people who will live until this time, we must listen with a carefully hearing ear. The Lord is saying that the earth has been sown for a long time with a value, a factor, a thing that looks just like what he sold. But because he is a master that doesn't jump to conclusions like the servants wanted him to. Some of us are those servants. Why doesn't God judge this? And why doesn't God bring them to justice? Because God has a perfect timing. 
God has a perfect timing for everything, and we cannot find out his rationale. So then it leaves for us to seek God, to say, oh God, give us patience, for we know that you are just, and you will bring everything that is in darkness to light in your timing. The master said that he had a timing for the harvest, and when he was ready, he would take the true wheat to himself and burn up the tares. But the question is, and here are the things the Lord gave me to look at before I go into the prophecy. Why do we spend so much time in the Supernatural series? Because I should let you know the Supernatural series is not ending anytime soon. I can see that God has parked me here because there's a lot of information that needs to be unpacked. People are willing to get this information from UFO channels and from the hugest disinformants themselves, the History Channel, but it is very rare to find Christian channels that are bringing out God's heart, that are showing that when it comes to UFOs and giants, when you get to the core of the story, you're not going to find um, any kind of strange creature. You're actually going to find the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is at the core of the story. He is the one who is actually managing the storyline and telling humanity where these beings come from, who they really are, where they flow from, and what their objective is for us as people. Three things, to outbreed humanity. This is why we are in the Supernatural series. We're in the Supernatural series so God can expose that one of Satan's great plans in the end days is to outbreed humanity. Satan has been breeding his own form of being that looks like us. Satan has also been breeding a ton of other fun freaks that do not look like us. And the plan is to outnumber us greatly here on our own home earth. The second thing is Satan is at work among us to encourage humanity to destroy itself. That's right. It's not only the normal sins that we see that people get involved in addiction and things like that. No, the transhumanist movement is coming to greatly encourage people to cut their arm off and get a new bionic arm because then if anybody bothers you, you can punch them to death with one punch with your new titanium steel arm. And you will get this arm and say, I'm using it to justify protecting my wife and kids, but this is arrogance of the heart. You dismember this physical body simply to take on new characteristics because the heart of the transhumanist movement, as I said, is to exalt ourselves above God, to say God's original design is a sham and a shame. We want to move above it and be more. The third thing is concerning judgment. It is to cause God to reject humanity. As you will hear in this message, anybody who does certain things, please don't expect that you will stand before God and be told, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. You will not. There are certain things God says that if you do it to the body, there's no coming back from it. You're absolutely not coming back from it. Don't expect to see his face. In fact, he said clearly, they will never hear my voice again after they do this and this. I've carefully written it down. And so I saw today that there will come a time when the things of darkness, the things that people say, oh, I was afraid I went on my front porch and I felt like someone was watching me. I felt like something was watching me. Those times will come when whatever it is that is off in the woods watching is not going to bother to hide anymore. Those things are going to be brought into society. And the way that the Lord has always shown it to me is that Satan is very clever. He will not bring 25 foot giants in public. I shared recently that they're going to come in looking above seven and a half and then eight and then maybe a cool nine. And people are going to be so in awe of them because most of them are going to have great agility, um, great athletic ability. And so they're going to be highly valued in those fields. And so they will come out and they will have the same rights as everyone. They will be accepted in society. And some of them are going to be the type of creature that does not speak natural human languages. Many of them will be fluent in multiple languages. It will be, they will be seeming to us like men and women who are very well traveled, but that is not the truth. That is just an innate ability that they get by the spirit. And they will be able to communicate with us perfectly using our own information, using our own languages. And I saw also the coming of a watch. There will be something like a communicator. It looked like a watch, but I couldn't exactly see what it was. It was just a little thing on the arm with a wristband and this person will speak into it and this thing will then translate their tongue their tongue meaning what they speak 
to us and then we can hear it and then we can also speak into that communicator and then it will translate what we say to them so it's going to be a highly blended society this is what is going to be encouraged but i'm just reminding that the lord said that satan will come to us in another skin what does this mean satan is not going to come looking like the trope from tv scaly red skin double horns, long tail, pitchfork. Satan is going to show up sometimes as the most normal thing, the next normal step. So when they are introducing these creatures in society, they will be a novelty, something that causes excitement, something that causes great interest. And as the Lord shows me, they are going to be far more important on TV and media than anything else. So the way the Lord showed it to me and explained it to me was this will be like an overnight phenomenon. One minute we're talking about oil prices, gas prices, food prices. We're talking about rising crime and things like that. The normal problems and issues of human life. The next minute, this is what you're going to find in the media. It is going to be constant conversation about hybrids, the presence of alien life, the presence of alien life forms, the presence of things that are not quite human, but they look like us. This hybrid revolution, as the Lord called it, is going to take the world by storm an overnight phenomenon. It will seem like almost a miracle. In fact, you will begin to wonder in your kitchen as you're making dinner and listening to clip after clip pop up on the news and pop up on various influencer websites. When did everybody all of a sudden become so interested in this thing? And what God was showing me is that information, at least here in the United States, especially information in the United States is very carefully managed. It's almost like there are thought influencers and thought leaders. And I've spoken on this before. If the media comes up with a term, you can guarantee that a million, a hundred thousand or a hundred million parrots across America will be repeating that catchphrase in three days time. So an example is for instance, in this recent military conflict, when the, when the, um, when the media began to use the word oligarch, all of a sudden people who had never come across the word oligarch in their normal lives, people who never even did sociology or economics or any of the subjects at school that would introduce them to the word oligarch were suddenly talking confidently about, yeah, but you know, these Russian oligarchs, this is a sign of management of information. And it's extremely successful here. So do not be surprised when once again, the media takes the lead in normalizing things that were once considered fringe. All of this, I'm speaking from what is before me now. The Lord said things that people have been mocked for four years. So I'm talking about those people who have been saying this since 1960, 1970, 1980, people who have been ridiculed. They've been mocked. They've been called every name in the book. They've been shamed. Their friends left them because they were revealing this information. Either they found this information through research or God revealed it to them. People have been researching this for decades, but they are mocked. They are called conspiracy theorists. They are called the tinfoil hat brigade. All of a sudden the media will do a 180 and begin to gaslight anyone who does not believe in these things. So fringe is about to become extremely normalized. And this is always a good sign that true information is always suppressed in this country until it is expedient for the powers that be. So until the government is ready to make a move with the information or until the government is saying, well, it looks like the population seems tough enough. They've been watching like 20 years, you know, of Scully and Mulder and the X-Files and they seem ready now for an alien and reveal. That's the only time when all of a sudden, like parrots with a cracker in the mouth, the media will begin to chirp, chirp, chirp certain key words, certain key phrases, certain key topics. And then in no time, like a drop of ink stains clean and pure water. The entire nation begins to talk about, wonder about, and the Lord was saying the very phrases that we know. Is there life among us? Are we alone? How often have you heard these types of questions from documentaries that you've watched and YouTube specials that you've watched? All of a sudden, all this stuff about aliens, about other lives, life forms, about hybrids will move into the forefront. 
And God says that if anybody doesn't like it, that person will be gaslighted and shamed until they either stop talking about the fact that they're not okay with this, they're going to stop sharing their views in public, or by the erosion of time, people will be slowly won over. So you know that people hate to be in the minority because in our current society, apparently, it is a crime to think for yourself. Group think is very, very much preferred. I call it the hive. So you don't want to think a thin thing on your own. You need to have at least a crew of a couple hundred or even a few hundred thousand people who think like you, and then you feel secure in the warmth of those people. So it doesn't matter what madness or insanity the group believes in it. The fact of many of you believing it validates it. So this is the kind of thing that's going to happen. As fringe becomes mainstream, those who were always fringe are going to be extremely validated. So at least that's going to be one thing that happens. But on the other side, those who see the deeper implications of having discussions about accepting hybrids into human society are going to be made ashamed they're going to be told that they lack hospitality and that they lack good neighborliness and good neighborliness and human warmth. Some of the questions are here, right? As time will wear them down, people will be won over if they don't start keeping their thoughts to themselves because they don't want to be mocked or judged. They're going to be won over by arguments of having compassion. Can't you see how similar they are to us? They appear to have the same thoughts and feelings as us. How would you like it if you went to their world and they treated you like this? So this is the kind of nonsensical argument that will be advanced to humanity as a reason to accept them. How would we like it if we suddenly came up with some magical way to fly all the way to where they say they came from and then we went to visit and then they wouldn't give us any lemonade? How would we like it? This is literally what you're going to hear coming out of the mouths of people. People will be won over by arguments of having empathy, but they're already here. They're here now. Where are they supposed to go? They need a place to live. People will be controlled and deceived by this tried and tested idea that if you are an empathetic person, a compassionate person, this means that you have to agree with everything, even insane things. And so God is saying that as we see this hive mind starting up, as we see this group think starting up, driven by the media, there's a prophecy on the master's voice that is called hiding among us, hidden in plain sight, aliens hidden in plain sight. I'll link it in the description box below and I'll try to leave it in a comment. Sometimes my comments get deleted by the algorithm. Uh, so uh, it, it may not be there, but I will definitely put it in the description box. And in that prophecy, I was shocked to see that a woman who had a father who worked in these secret investigative alien life witness program, that there's a witness program here in the United States, um, and people were saying, oh, this is like men in black. It might be, but there is a witness program here, and the Lord showed me in that witness program that they have a lot of aliens that look just like you and me, normal people. They have businesses, they have children, they have integrated among us, and then there's another type of alien that is so violent and has openly expressed desires to kill people and shred people, that they're kept in underground testing facilities and stuff hidden all across the United States. So those ones have to be kept in captivity and monitored because they are very vocal about their desire to kill. And this is what the alien deception will be. They will bring out the good ones and say that the good ones should live with us. And it's going to be this fake game of when the bad ones come, then the good ones are going to say, don't make treaties with the bad ones. Don't involve yourself with them. They're dangerous. But hear the words of the Lord. It is all one defiled abomination that comes from Satan, the cursed and defiled abomination in chief. And if anyone falls for it, if any nation or any person affiliates themselves with this thing, they will get the full the full repercussions of what they bring. And so here are some of the hybrids that the Lord was speaking about to me today, new and old. The first one is chimeras. Now this can be man spliced with one animal. And so it will be one animal mixed with the human DNA. Remember that the title of this prophecy is the human alien hybrid question. And so it can be the DNA of man spliced with one animal and 
the visible traits of humanity will be in this chimera and the visible traits of the animal will be in this chimera. And one of the best examples of that that I can give is a centaur. A centaur is a man mixed with horse, whereby the top part is all man up until the torso, and then it lengthens into the horse's body. So centaurs are, you, you'll see a human face and they can definitely talk and they have hands up here, but then the bottom is the four legs and whatever sexual gender of the horse, male and female. Um, another type of chimera the Lord revealed to me is a combination of beasts. So this is two or more animals also visibly manifesting what they are along with the human genome, or it can be two animals manifesting what they are without any human mix. So um, I think there's this... I think England used to have it on one of its seals or something like that. It's a, it's a lion mixed with an eagle. I think it's called a, a griffon or a griffin, one of those. So that's an example of a chimera. It will be a lion, but it has wings. And we know natural lions don't have wings. And the head of the griffin is usually the head of the eagle, but it clearly shows the lion's body with wings. But it can also be something like the beast in Revelation 13, which is said to have the mouth of a lion the body of a leopard, and the feet of a bear. It can also be a combination where one animal, so one animal will visibly mix with man. So it will be, again, let's say it's a wolf. So this will be a wolf that has the characteristics of a wolf and the characteristics of man, and yet it walks upright and it, and it can choose to wear clothing and it can talk, but it can also perhaps swim like a dolphin. So it will show inactive characteristics of other animals that have been mixed into the chimera. So please try and stick with me here. We're talking about a chimera that will have human DNA, giving it the human traits of talking, walking, preferring to dress like a person, maybe driving a car. I do not know how these things will go, but then it will also have other animal characteristics that are active, meaning that they're present, but they're silent, meaning you can't see them until the chimera begins to move in those other animal characteristics like tracking or swimming, doing something perhaps that a land animal cannot do, but because chimera DNA has been put into it and blended, this land animal can now perhaps do what a water animal can do perfectly, and you wouldn't have known it until it came to that situation. The next thing the Lord talked to me about is amalgamated hybrid. The word amalgamate means mixed. These are two or more animals living in the same body. And as God was showing this to me, I saw little snipping. I kept hearing through most of this prophecy, something like little, little scissors cutting. So just chop, 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 snip, 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 and seeing little pieces of DNA, just, you know, sort of like a movie sequence flying off into the distance. And the Lord was saying that there are an endless number of genotypes. I guess that means DNA strands or DNA characteristics that can be fractured and broken into little pieces and then sewn back together again into one individual and we will see that a lot in the end times. The next thing is a hybrid that is conceived from the seed of alien beings. So I've discussed at length about how the fallen angels made themselves an entire bloodline um, by sleeping with women, but the Lord also said that there is a genetic breeding program whereby aliens, the creatures, the skinny little gray things that we call aliens, also are manufacturing themselves. A genetic breeding program, he said, where women are ab slash ducted and used as incubators for birthing babies, said that they do not sleep with the women, these little gray things, but they use scientific method and their own technology to mix their genetic material with human genetic material to form a live embryo that they then put in the woman. And she will carry that baby either to full term, meaning that she will birth the whole baby out, bring the baby to full term, or she will carry the baby to a certain stage of gestation. And then they take the baby out of her and finish the growth process themselves. And that infant is raised as a hybrid. These children, the Lord said, do not look right at all, especially the original ones, but through selective breeding techniques, 
The Lord says that they have now produced something that is so close to humanity that only by telltale signs in the bone structure and the body structure, you may be able to tell. He said that there are millions of this type. There is also genetically made Nephilim. This is Nephilim who have died, but their genetic material is still all across this world, available to those who have access to it, to those who know where the ancient burial sites are, to those who are, I guess, willing to go steal it from museums and things like that. Someone did mention it. And I answered her question. Reverse engineering is the process whereby you are able to bring a thing back exactly as it was simply by using its dead, dried genetic material. I guess you just need to wake it up and maybe mix some blood in it or whatever they do, and it will come back. And so Nephilim DNA will be brought back to life in modern science procedures. And if you watch the video on this channel that is titled Og of Bashan, the Lord indeed surprised me by telling me that Og of Bashan of Deuteronomy chapter three will be brought back to life in this way. And so will many pharaohs because many of the pharaohs were original Nephilim kings and they carried this corrupted Nephilim seed in their bloodline. And then there are Nephilim that are born from blood stock. These never died out. These are direct descendants of the fallen angels via the giant bloodline. They escape by whatever means and preserve themselves a remnant on the earth, the same way that God kept a remnant for Noah. Now, some people like to say, no, the the angels came the first time and then they came the second time because the Bible says there were giants on the earth in those days and after that. But the place that we get the truth of these writings concerning the fallen angels, which is the book of Enoch, does not support this. Enoch's book only talks about one incursion. He talks about one time the angels came and when they were caught by God in what they did, how they wept and they sought for a way back and they were refused. And they were told that as punishment for their sins, they would watch their offspring, these huge giants, kill one another and then die out as God's judgment upon them. And so for me, I am, I am content When the Bible says that Goliath was there, and this is after the flood, when the Bible says that Israel was constantly battling these people and it was after the flood, I believe the word of God that these guys came back by whatever means. I also mentioned in one of the videos that there is a very long and boring poem by the name of the Epic of Gilgamesh. And in the Epic of Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh says with his own mouth, for he was a Nephilim, he was a giant, Gilgamesh mentions that his people also heard tell of the coming of a flood, and they also moved to build themselves a boat and thereby preserve themselves. So this is something to take in consideration. I also saw in a prophecy on the master's voice that is called the the sons of old, that these giants were so tall that they could put their hand on top of a mountain and rest their hand on the top of a mountain. Now, remember the flood says that the waters rose up to a certain amount of cubits. I think it was 40 cubits. So that may be a certain amount of stories high. So it's quite possible, and this is just something for your consideration, that anything that was taller than those stories would not die. Nephilim of the sea will not die when the sea rises because they're in there and they're swimming and it does not affect them. The next thing the Lord spoke about were clones. Clones are hybrids. They are a mix of human material, this is DNA, and synthetic pieces bringing back a similitude of human flesh. Similitude means extremely close in design and feel and appearance to the real thing. So some synthetics will feel exactly and look like people. Some have a more plasticky and doll-like consistency, but If Satan is perfecting his craft, then we have to assume that he is erring more and more on the side of what looks like us and can move around and talk like us. And for that, you can visit the prophecy, Serpent People and Humanoids. I will also try and link that below, or I will watch this video back and then make links of everything. The Lord said that all of these abominations, so every single type that you hear me covering from old videos and from what he revealed today, have no soul. This is the discernment of the saints. 
Salvation is in Christ alone, by grace alone, through faith alone. And salvation, the shedding of that perfect blood from Christ Jesus, was only for mankind whose soul has become corrupted from sin. The soul must be saved. The soul is God's primary concern and business. God is not concerned with soulless beings for those who continue to have sympathy for them which is something I cannot understand. God is concerned with the saving of the human soul and the repatriation of lost sheep back to life. So all these things have no soul, and that means that they are completely outside the care of God, which makes them his perpetual enemy. Many people sometimes say, why are they coming and why are they? If you are a person that was seeking reprieve, you committed a crime, and you cried before the judge to seek mercy, and the judge told you your crimes are heinous. They cannot be forgiven. Do you think that that person will have anything to lose when you tell him that he's going to be sentenced? That's the kind of person when you let him out of parole, he's taking a gun and wiping out the entire police station next time he has a chance. People who cannot be received back to repentance have nothing to lose. Satan can never come back to repentance because he is completely apostate. And so are all who follow him. So the reason that they have been left here on the earth as our punishment is because God sees them as the fitting punishment for a generation of people who are similarly lost, similarly hardened, similarly rejecting repentance and God's mercy and saying, we have no need of this God. Who is this God that you're always chanting on about? Let him stay in his sky dress and mind his business, but we will follow after our own gods and we shall be gods unto ourselves. So this is part of why they have been left in the earth for the judgment of the final times. As hardened as they are, God sees that this generation is equally as hardened. So hardened will be here on earth with hardened. But as Daniel says, iron and clay will not mix. And this evil, gener this evil group will trample the residue. That's us. That's humanity. That's soft flesh that will not be able to live with and stand up in the, in the great, in the greater scheme of things to these creatures. So when we hear about these things, God's heart is that mankind repents. It is only through repentance that you will be able to receive the, re the protection of God from these things. The last type of Nephilim is modified humans. And I will hear I will share a dream um, that I've never shared, uh, and I'm not going to put it on the blog. I'm just going to share it in an amended form. So the first type of modded human is a modified man who is not man. Man that will join himself to the beast system by taking all sorts of tonics and um, elixirs and receiving software into the body and taking cocktails juiced up humans in a way, and also scientific modifications of actual hardware. So the removal of an arm, replacing it with a bionic arm, the removal of a leg, not because necessarily you've lost the leg in an accident and you need the surgery. No, this is elective surgery. I want my legs to be taken off and I want plutonium running legs bonded to me because I want to be some type of Iron Man hybrid. So eyes replaced with scanners, body integrated with various forms of technology. You see how far they've moved us along into wearables, wearable watch that can track your heart rate and everything. But if you ever want to take your Fitbit off or your Apple watch off, you can. When you become integrated with technology, you cannot take the wearable off. You have become the wearable. And in doing so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, you void your warranty as a human being. There's no going back to God for you. Anyone who plays these games, you better enjoy them because there is no forgiveness for this. Anyone who does these things to their bodies to become better or more than the human being God created, you're going to be cut off. So the Lord said that people will drink all sorts of things to reduce signs of aging. There will be things called youth cocktails and stuff like that. Physical procedures to reverse aging and even and he spoke at length about this. Please go to the master's voice and read this word. Removal of the body into another body, which the Lord called a trap you cannot come back from. That is a clock you cannot unwind. And it is an abomination. 
It will be a process whereby the human consciousness is removed from the body and put in some kind of floating state, some kind of suspended state. And then at will, it can be put into another body. The Lord said that the human body will be treated like a sock. You can put it on and take it off when you want. The problem with that is taking off the body, he says, will cut the connection to him the first time you try it, and that will be the last time you ever have a connection to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said that connection to me will be severed the first time you ever try it, and that will be it for you forever. No matter how many times you come out of your body and go back to it, you will never again hear the Lord's voice or know salvation. You will be one of whom scripture speaks of when it says your conscience is seared with a hot iron and it is impossible to renew you to repentance. So all who willingly depart their bodies to go out and try other things, when they come back to their body thinking like Samson, oh, I will go out again and the spirit of the Lord will be with me. You can't forget it. You will be cut off from God as if by a sharp molten sword, never to reconnect. Even if you reconnect with your body multiple times because of science, you will be cut off from the Lord Jesus Christ forever. And then the second type of modded human is where I will share this dream. The other type of modded humanity is born that way. They become hybrid from the womb. These are exceptionally genetically enhanced people. And I'm talking about enhanced to the millionth degree. So if humanity is a dial whereby someone can be handsome, very handsome, unbelievable handsome, and who on earth is that? Or it can be dialed back the other way. This type of person will be dialed forward in every possible way. And then the knob will be broken off and thrown away. The Lord said, these people are free from sickness, free from genetic defect, free from disease. It will be, and I was seeing something as, you know, when you have a live wire, they usually put live and dangerous wires inside some kind of rubber casing so that we don't get shocked. So for instance, the, the cords of our cell phones and the cords of our laptops are all protected in this type of rubber sheath. And so I was seeing it was almost as if there was some type of sheath over these people's DNA so that it was extremely protected from all types of wear and tear decay proof and they become immune to all the things that humanity suffers by reason of the curse in the garden of Eden. So God told us now you will only live a certain amount of time and now you will get old and now you will have to labor and sweat for bread. And now you shall die at a certain number of years. But these people aging, sickness, disease, tiredness, weakness, genetic defects, muscle fatigue, and even death. All of that stuff will be edited out of these people while they are still as embryo in vitro. And then they will be put back in the womb so they can be put into their mother's womb. But as the Lord has been saying to me, just in private conversation, surrogacy is going to skyrocket worldwide. Young available women who need money are going to offer their wombs to basically pump out children so that they can finance the kind of lifestyle that they want. It won't even be their baby most of the time. They will literally offer themselves as a baker's oven to carry this type of baby for rich people who do not want to do it perhaps, or just for people who cannot carry the baby full term. It will be a mother's seed and a father's seed genetically tweaked and then put into a surrogate or carried by the mother. Please hear the things that are going to be left in these people. They're going to have long, long hair. And the kind of hair I saw was not the kind of hair that let's just say ethnicities grow. It is the kind of hair that is the hair that you see in the Pantene adverts. I'm going to talk about that. They're usually going to be very tall. They're going to have great muscle tone. They're going to have very nice bodies and beautiful facial features. They're going to have virtually no scent or body odor. So just imagine if Febreze could sweat, they'll be like that. Human weaknesses will be cut out, leaving only the most desirable traits. We're talking about speed, not Nephilim super speed, but just much faster than the average human because the body carriage is extremely strong. The muscle mass is at perfection for the male and perfection for the female. And so when this person competes in athletics, they're going to leave normal guys and girls who have had to work out at the gym in the dust. This person is coming out of the womb 
and growing into somebody who's ripped, just naturally whipped, ripped. He's eating pizza. She's drinking a lot of soda and eating burgers. And yet the muscle tone is intact because it has been genetically tweaked that way. Strength, incredible stamina, height, beauty, intelligence, kindness. And some of them will even have voices that sound like the movement of waters. The Lord said melodious water. So they will have these incredibly charming voices where people will say, I just love listening to her talk because it's going to sound like water bubbling in the brooks. Some will even have a clairvoyant quality, like knowing things before they happen. Please note, this is not the spirit of prophecy. The Lord says that there are centers in the brain that can be triggered in a person scientifically and that this will come out in the child. Another thing, race will be heavily manipulated. The darker skin tones will be heavily manipulated out of the population. If possible, darker skin tones will be bred out of the possible in the new world out of the population, if possible, in the new world order. If you don't like hearing about this, this is not the place for you. This is an adult place where I'm giving forth the information that I have received with nothing removed. So there is an entire post about this on the master's voice. I do not think it is a video yet, but it is part of a series. And the name of that prophecy is eugenics. And the Lord speaks to me a lot about how darker skin tones and certain races are already being slowly bred out of the population. So he said that darker skin tones will be heavily manipulated out of the population if they can. And in fact, it will be a preference of many parents engineering their babies because they want their babies to have better placement in this world. So anyone who wants to say that there is no discrimination based on how people look and I don't see color, you're just living in a dream world for children. In the real world, disparity exists and certain things have been a part of especially this society as long as the sun has been shining over the nation called America. It was founded in these issues and they exist today. And a mature person will learn how to navigate that landscape, landscape with grace and empathy instead of pretending that it is not a part of the national fabric. And so the Lord showed me that many multiracial couples will choose this option. A dark father, a white mother, a dark father, an Asian mother, they will opt together to give the baby a better shot in life and will say, up him three or four notches towards mom, push him three or four notches towards dad so that he has better employment opportunities and things like that. I also saw that even darker skinned people will choose this option based on their own life experiences. So a mother or father who has gone through this will then say, I know the hell that I experienced in junior school, high school, in the employment world, in the dating world, my baby's not going through that. And they're going to a black couple make the decision to also push the needle a little bit further. So here is the dream that I saw. I dreamt that the times had come and uh, the society was becoming extremely segregated between what God made and what God did not make. And sometimes human beings decided that they were going to go to what I just called the fringe. So I usually just call it the fringe. This is a place where there will not be a lot of services. Why? Because nobody expected people to want to live in those areas. The nicely done areas, city areas, fancy areas are going to be extremely made up for the comfort of the new world order. And so part of that society is having these things walking around. Maybe you're a cop, just like it showed in that movie, Bright. Your partner is going to be some creature from the Blue Lagoon, and the two of you are going to work together. That is how it is. And so I saw that Christians wanted to move out. And so they were being bussed out. And there was this lady on the bus. She was a redhead, very good looking woman in very good shape. She did not want to go to this place. So she did not want to go to where the other Christians were going. She was a Christian, but you know that Christianity is full of all types, those who really are and those who just say they are because it's trendy and it's convenient for now. She did not want to go to this place. And so when the bus stopped at a gas station. The bus stopped at a gas station. There I saw the perfect people. They literally, in the dream, it almost as if they were being filmed from below so that they looked like superheroes, Captain America. It was 
a black guy, a black girl, and a brunette and a blonde, um, brunette guy and blonde girl. And then, and they were not like dating or anything. They were just people. And they were standing there in sports clothes. So, you know, the, the little sleeveless thing and the short shorts, they basically looked as if they, they ran track or competed varsity. I have never seen such perfectly sculpted people in my life. And the Lord was giving me the knowledge in my heart. Those muscles that you see, those perfectly toned calves, those perfectly shaped thighs, those broad shoulders you see on the men, those perfectly long necks, they were born like that. They did not work for that body shape. And the black girl had hair almost to about this place and it was bone straight, not pressed or anything. It grew out of her scalp like that. And they were so handsome. The guys, you know, the chiseled cheekbone, everything that you see that the magazine tells you either look like this or basically you don't need to be on this planet. They had that. And to my surprise, this redheaded lady ran off the bus and went to stand with those people and try to affect their pose. So she tried to stand like them. And I realized that God was showing me that in those times, people who are naturally genetically blessed now will attempt to blend into that society rather than extricate themselves and go and live in the fringe where I guess you have to dig a well and you have to use fire and create a fire and then cook instead of just having a stove and switching it on or getting an instant meal or any of the things that I don't know people will be injecting into themselves and saying, oh no, this is my food code or anything like that. She ran off the bus and she went to stand with those people. And I saw to my shock that she was a pretty good dupe. She was a pretty good match. Um, and we left her. She did not join the bus. Uh, she stayed and she blended with those people. And that was the first time I ever saw the coming of what I call the perfect people. The perfect people will be made from their own mother's genes and their own father's genes, but their mother's and father's genes will be tweaked to an unbelievable level that you will not even know. How can a person be this smart, be this intuitive, be this kind, have the perfect laughter that makes the party 10 times better? Um, that's what they're going to be like. And yet the Lord was showing me that even if humanity is made its best, if it is made as Satan's evolution of man, he, God, will not accept it. So for those thinking, but are they still hybrids? If they have their own mother and father's seed, God does not count them at humanity. God does not think like Satan. God thinks in terms of spiritual realities and truths. So Satan will tell you that superiority of humanity is the outward, but God teaches us through his word that superiority of mankind is actually the born again man who then is able to walk in the fullest expression of the spirit of God. So even if such a man is aging by the time he reaches this higher level of Christianity, or even if this man is very young and has an accident and has to spend the rest of his life confined to a wheelchair, even though he outwardly looks like something that Satan would disdain and mock, to God, this man is worthy of the highest honors that heaven has to give. And so I hope that you have heard the word of the Lord. This is a longer video than usual, but there is a lot to teach. There is a lot to share. And God wants us to know that the devil will just deceive many people with these things. So it doesn't matter, even if I make a five-hour video warning about these things, the fact is that many of you who are parents, you know that your children are in love with this type of world. Every time it's shown on TV, you hear your son who's 18 or your daughter who's 21 going, you know, I would love that. I would actually get that. There's so many people, when you see the new tech on TV, I'm very interested in humanity. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not even watching the video. I pause it and I'm reading the commentary because it gives me a window into where we are as a people. And if you do that, you will see that the comment section shows you that I don't know what it's like in um, Peru. I do not know what it's like in France or in Ghana, but I know that here in the United States, the heart of the people here are primed to receive the beast system, especially the youth. They can barely wait for it to get here. And so if anyone is minded to amalgamate himself to the beast, understand that even if you seek for redemption before the Lord with tears, 
It will be denied you. And these are the Lord's own words. I am Celestial, and this is the Master's voice. Thank you for being with me. And until I see you again, God bless you. Thank you to all of you who support this ministry. May the Lord return it to you 10, 20, and 100 fold and bless you for your heart of understanding. Until I see you again, keep your prayers up and be responsible in your lives. God bless you. Goodbye.